Good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure to announce Christina Sprindler from uh, the company behind MicroPython. She will introduce us on how MicroPython works on the Pi board. She said of herself, uh, she's not a programmer and doesn't know Python. So let's see how this turns out. Please give her a warm hand in the morning. Um, thank you, Max, for the introduction. And thank you all for being here. I was not expecting so many people, so that's really awesome that you're all here. And I hope most of you did get a Pi board. But with the other, we will figure this out later. Everybody who has a PC with him should be ready to follow, even on our online emulator. So, um, yes, well, I don't know Python, that's true. Uh, I am an, um, I didn't, didn't, did a, did a, did a, I did a degree in economics and electrical engineering, um, and there was no Python taught at school. I do know C, I do know JavaScript, I had a lot of programming classes, but during my final thesis, um, I discovered MicroPython, which, which was announced as the Internet of Things for, uh, as the Linux for the Internet of Things, so like Python runs the Internet, so probably MicroPython can run the Internet of Things. Um, but first of all, I will, I'm probably sure that not everybody knows MicroPython and the history of it. So I will start with about what is MicroPython, how everything started back in 2013. Um, and then we will go get to the fun part where you can all uh, dive into the PyBot and look how easy it is to set it up. You can dive in a little bit on your own probably and we'll see how much time we do have. And I will tell you what is coming next and what we are planning for the future. Um, the motivation for MicroPython was you have Python as a high level, easy to learn scripting language, um, which has definitely a lot of advantages compared to C or even assembler when you look into microcontrollers and these little sophisticated devices that get more and more advanced, but they also get more and more um, hard to program. So Damien George, the creator of MicroPython, had the idea it would be really cool to have a high-level scripting language to control these devices easily. So not only for beginners, it would be great to learn to get their hands on some hardware. It would, it's also increasing um, people that do development in, like they, which do hardware development in these areas, and they get really more productive with not hassling around with the seed to even get the first blinking LED lights. So this is something I will show you later, um, how easy it is to get, set this up with the PyBond, which is our evaluation platform. So as said before, MicroPython is a very powerful modern, modern language and has a large, great community. Um, it's all over the world and it's growing very fast. So MicroPython is, a, is not a C, implementa C Python implementation. It's a completely rewritten from scratch to make it Re, um, to make it work that the other resources that, that, that it runs on can, get, can be officially used. So as we call it, it's Python bare metal. So there is no operating system in between um, your controllings and you're controlling with MicroPython directly the hardware. Hopefully this gets a little bit clear, clearer when we um, get to the hardware parts later. Um, so it, has a, it is a run, uh, runtime compiler and you get your familiar REPL which you are all familiar with um, and you have extra modules that control hardware. <clears throat> uh, I don't know all of your backgrounds but you are probably like classic um, software developer uh, and there are some differences to embedded software engineers which I'm, well, I am in the beginning of. Uh, so you, as an embedded software engineer, you always have to know your hardware. You really need to know what is hardwired um, and how to control this hardware with your software skills. Uh, it's, it's like a really interaction between. As a software developer, you have other um, uh, great challenges to, to, to handle, but you can do it a little bit um, extracted from the hardware layer. Yeah, so with an embedded software engineer, it's mainly about controlling and managing the hardware. Okay, uh, back in 2013, um, Damien George, as mentioned before, had the idea, hey, this would be cool 
to control these <laughs> microcontrollers with MicroPython, and uh, maybe there are other people interested in. So I tried this new thing, the Kickstarter, and I um, I make a goal of 15,000 and see how it goes. So this would be the money I need to do my first um, PCB prototype. <laughs> and well, it went re really well. So he gained 100,000, and the MicroPython was really wanted by the people community. Or yeah, so th this was really a success. Um, in 2015, the ESA fundi, uh, funded the language to make it more robust to, uh, to critical embedded devices, which probably run in space or satellites. This is like a really big step, so because if we have software that runs in space, well, that must be really reliable. Maybe some of you have heard about the BBC Microbit, which was given to a million um, children in the UK, which also can be programmed with MicroPython. Um, in 2016, there was uh, another <coughs> Kickstarter, a pure software Kickstarter to um, run the ESP8266. Have anybody heard of these tiny chips with Wi-Fi implemented, very cheap, and yeah, initial, initially controlled to, for, for controlling light bulbs, but they kind of reverse engineered it, so now you can use it for little, so your little software projects. Um, and this year, we were really busy with developing new hardware. There's a new LCD touch screen, as you can see here in the aluminum cases. We did some machine drilled, anodized, laser engraved casings, so we got really like crazy about this because we made them quite beautiful, as I, I, I believe. But there were also a lot of software improvements. Um, you can now use help modules, which show you what you can control on your board. You can dive easily into it. The code coverage got up to 98%. There's threading, threading now available on the Pi board. And very important, which I think, if you're one of the backers from, our first, uh, from the first Kickstarter, you got a little Pi board on your own. And this is still supported after three, three years. So we, we try to support the hardware that you not, don't have to buy a new one. So this is all go, ongoing development. And I think this is still a part why this is also successful. Um, which means, yeah, it's an open a public project on GitHub and has over 5,000 stars. And it's ranking in the top 10 of the C, C++ projects over there. It's MIT licensed, so if you are a hardware developer, you can use micro, or software developer, obviously. You can use MicroPython and build a product, and you're very welcome to do so. There is no fee or anything related to this. Uh, but we live from, from this open source community, so everybody who contributes back, this is like really important for us. There are a lot of people who do so, about 180 at the moment. Um, which is quite interesting because they have all different systems where, where, where the MicroPython run on and they make different test suites and everything. So it makes the code really robust and like that you can use it for serious um, production or products, not only for maker market, but this is also a thing. Here you can see an a quadrocopter controlled by the, by the Pi board. And this is a re remote wireless weather station from, <laughs> from one of our well, really <laughs> great users who supports a lot in the forum, and yeah, so people really like to use it, um, and I hope you do later too. But there are also applications for the real world. For example, there's a traffic man man management device, um, which special about this device is uh, if, you tra if you're monitoring road traffic, it has to be reliable around the clock, like there's no um, like it's, it's, it's a device that runs 24 seven. Um, and this is produced and MicroPython controls this and it's very reliable, so yeah. There is another project um, where the international certification is still in progress, but it's in the medical um, area, which um, there, this is a contact-free optoelectronic uh, measurement device, which also is controlled by MicroPython, so this is yeah, just to underline it again and again, it's very robust, not, a, not only like to use it for toys, but we also like to use it for toys, obviously. Um, so there are many uh, of these maker development pl um, platforms out there, our Pi boards, the official boards, then our skins, um, other fruit industries, has an own port of MicroPython called CircuitPython. They made a lot of boards of, um, 
which is built on top, but they changed a couple of things, so it's kind of a fork of the um, of MicroPython. Yeah, it is. Uh, then there are PyCom modules, which support different networks. Obviously, the ESP32 and 86, 8266 are very cheap, so there are a lot of um, handmade or self-made from makers platforms out there. Uh, but also, uh, the bigger companies like ST or Digi International are looking into MicroPython, and some of their newer modules come pre-implemented with MicroPython, and you can can get an easier start with it probably. So I believe they saw the advantage too and think, think they want to give the user like a better platform to, yeah, to get the interaction better on. So, but now we are getting to the fun part. Um, this is the Pivot uh, pin layout, the Pivot light. I brought in the Pivot light. Um, and special about the Pivot light is why light? It's really low power. As you can see here, it runs at 96 megahertz, but only consume, consumes 23 milliamps. And you have different states. Obviously, you can put it into deep sleep, and then it's only six microamps. So this is a real another level um, of power consumption. So for example, back in my days when I did my final thesis in electrical engineering, this was one of my focuses, like how to run the Internet of Things with really low power because there will be so many devices in a few years. Um, and this is why I came to MicroPython at some point. Mm, so you have a lot of, did you unpack the board already? Or are you all, have you already plugged it in? Or <laughs> so please open. I have, I have my, mine here. So you can see an SD card reader. Is everybody still with me? <laughs> um, there are four LEDs. Some switches you can use. So I thought I focus on what is on, already on the board, but of course you have a lot of um, IO pins where you connect different sensors, and there are libraries in the forum where can you, if you want to get an easy start with it. Okay, so. Um, are there Linux PCs out there? I, I, I show you with my Linux PC because this is what I have here. So just a little nodding oh, would be great. <laughs> so, um, sorry? Yes, something like that, yeah. <laughs> because if I, if I lose it, it doesn't, doesn't like make much sense. So um, I unplug this, plug this again. So use your micro USB cable, plug in the board into your, P into your PC. Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Did you did you see something pop up? Great. No? Do you have a data line in your cable? You think so? Did, did you see a briefly flashing green light when you plugged the board in? Yes? So I'm pretty sure there's no data line. Or maybe could could be only a charging cable. Um, so, but the people who see the, the pivot flash can click on it. And you should see four files, the boot pie, the main pie, the readme text, and a driver for, for Windows. So if you open main pie, you can put your Python code here. Yes, still some nodding, no? Okay, so, okay, great. <laughs> so I, I, will, I will move on. So we type import pipe, which controls our hardware on the board, um, and we would like to switch to so switch on an LED. Could you increase the text size, please? Ah, yes. Sorry, I was I was still yeah. Uh, should be no. Uh, no, then the, this this types into the. Uh, 
Yes, but I would like to... Would no? Preferences, probably? Yeah, but this the problem. <laughs> okay, I think we just start with the REPL because I know how to increase the the the, <laughs> the font there. Okay. Um. So mainly there are three, way, three, three ways to program your board. You can enter, you can put, put type into the main pie, which I just showed you in a too tiny, tiny uh, font. Sorry for that. Um, you can do it remote script, or you can do the REPL prompt. Um, you know the rep, you know REPL, uh, the REPL from from the, uh, the non uh, Python programming. So if you If you have you used the terminal uh, screen, uh, like put your Terra term on Windows or screen or Picocom on Mac um, before? If you could try for Windows user to go um, to find the pie button in your list device that you know how it is connected to which COM port that you can get your REPL prompt. Okay, i just show you. So with Linux you can, oh, that's better, you can use for example PicoCom to enter the REPL and now you can type um, simple functions or if you type if you type help, you you have different modules. What is on your board? Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> um, you can pipe. Uh, you can t type pipe info to get some general information about about what what what's on your board. Like for, for example, inside this REPL you can use control R to enter a raw REPL mode or control B to, to enter the normal REPL mode. Like that you can do interactively program and see what happens and don't have to edit the main pie directly and inject and put it in again. So you can do the testing of your code a little bit more interactive. There are some modules available, like some, for example, import math module, where you can print out a square root of five, and like you can calculate. So these are the the principal things to calculate stuff. But as you you probably see, there are there are also. Um, so let's, for example, make a little a little loop for e in the range of twenty. Now you're entering the loop as, you, uh, as the loop, as you can see with the three dots. Print hello PyCon. So 
and you, you, you get an output on your screen. So what I try to say is like there's no IDE you need to install before you can get started with the hardware. You can access it easier to move forward. Um, so do I have some people that plugged it in and made it? Okay, great. <laughs> Very great, thank you. <laughs> um, so we could um, make something with the LEDs um, and the time. So we import the time, we import the pipe module, and also for E in range of maybe 500, you can, like as, as I said before, there are four LEDs on the board and we would like to do a little, a little loop that turns them on in a, in a, or like toggled how the function is called here. Then you have a time sleep function which switch them off for some milliseconds. Yes. This was obviously on purpose to show you how the, the <laughs> how the um, how a failure how a typo is handled. Like they 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 tell you, but there will probably another one. So don't worry. Um, so, and if you hand enter. You should get a little loop and a little random. Sorry? Yes, please. Yes, please. A bracket missing? Yes, where? Tell me. Okay. It's always looking different there and my desktop PC at home. It's strange. Um, so, questions? Okay. So what I'm trying to say, so now this is, um, the loop, uh, this is a for loop, so after it's finished, you will, it will get out again and you will be ready to, to type your, new, your, your next command. Or if, the, if, if we wouldn't have waited, and now you're back in, in your REPL. Like you, you, of course, this is just the, the stuff that's already on the board, but if you try to add a sensor to your board or you, you can easily test where it's connected. So this is just a few lines of code. Um, and this is a big advantage to how, if you would use it compared to C, well, at least in my experience when I was doing this in my studies back in the days. So maybe you have a different um, Im impression or I don't know. Um, then we could do another LED object because there are two LEDs that are special. They um, you can control the intensity, so there are different functions to do to do this. Um, so the object, let's call it pi d number four. We set the intensity of the LED to zero which means it will be off. <coughs> Plus And if you now look at the board, you should see the blue LED getting from, like, from turned off to going brighter and brighter. Ah, sorry, sorry. Of course, you you should have we should have hit Control D before. Sorry, this is, is this a little bit confusing. <laughs> 
So I enter this again. Um, import time. Im import pipe. Sorry? So let's try if we can make this work. So now you, ha you have a, a loop which turns the LED like from out to more and more bright and then run runs in an infinity loop. As So you won't, like this is an infinity loop, you would be stuck if you put this on your main pie. So this is, like, for example, an advantage that you can now control C and just stop it and go on if you find um, a mistake. So probably you don't do mistakes during programming, but I do a lot, as you can see. Um, and so this is quite like, like comfortable, easy, I guess. So simple, but genius in a little kind of way, I guess. Um, OK, so I will switch back to the presentation. Sorry. <laughs> sorry if it was confusing, I'm sorry. Um, so, um, well, so now you saw a little bit, of course, I'm a little bit, I was a little bit distracted, but count this out. So what do you think? Do you think this is easy or is this painful? Or what do you think is, um, when I uh, first encountered this little board, I thought, Oh, well, it's tiny, but it's probably not, not much different to any other board that's already out there. But when I saw that this is so quite easy to get started without in, um, installing anything, this was so cool. This is working well, not at the first step, as you can see, but pretty close to from the beginning. So this was this made me quite happy and improved a little bit the speed of my final thesis and everything. So I could really focus... Um, on the problem I wanted to solve and not on getting it up in the first place. Because these are just the beginning steps to, ah, uh, this is how it works and how can I switch the button and stuff and how can I get something working. But everybody who does serious development work, well, they have to do, uh, they have to, to solve the, the much bigger problems. So for example, you probably couldn't use MicroPython for everything in your application. But the cool thing with MicroPython is that, that you can mix. So you can say, oh, I want to do this really in assembler because I want to turn every bit. So there's an inline assembler modu module as well, which you can easily, like for me, I also did this uh, in the beginning of my studies. This was interesting, obviously, to learn how, how these, these um, devices work. But really controlling them was not intuitive like compared to Python. So this is the advantage that I see. So it's for beginners and for advanced users. They can try out all the stuff easy. And the fact that, it, that MicroPython is MIT licensed means that it can be used for obvious private projects, but also it's interesting for industrial projects. And as proven um, that ESA is supporting and also other companies are using it for their development it's quite reliable and maybe um, worth looking into it if you want to increase your development time. Um, 
So what's next for MicroPython or George Robotics Limited? As mentioned, as mentioned, um, there are uh, MicroPython is in school with the microbit, obviously, but also the PyBot gets more and more interested, like with teaching, getting the getting children or even universities to the level where they can really physically see what their, their software is doing. And this kids makes this really happy that they made something in the real world with their programming. And yeah, this is quite something we want to look more and more into it to make all the new uh, programmers more, make it easier for them to, to get really started and if they are into programming. There will always be continued hardware and software development to improve the, the software more and more and um, yeah, making it even more reliable probably to make it easier em embedding because you have always risk constrained areas when you go into these tiny devices. You want to go smaller, 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 smaller and you want to go at least like never have them charged in their lifetime again. So these are would be like the goals which we are trying to, to go for. And then obviously there will be the development of new boards and new PyWord add-ons. And yes, we are in the middle um, of developing the new PyWord D series. Um, but um, due to the fact that <laughs> controllers are very limited at the moment right now, so it's booming everywhere, so we are not like everybody is quite struggling to get components, so we are still um, in the prototyping process, but this means there are first pictures ready, <clears throat> So, and I'm happy to show you, because there might be some people that are really familiar with MicroPython and might like to see what is coming next with us. Well, are there any questions? Thank you. Uh, so first of all, thank you for an excellent talk. That was really fascinating. Um, <laughs> thank now, you. Now, uh, um, I just checked and there is, um, there's at least a, um, an IPython kernel for, the, for MicroPython. So you can run the IPython notebook apparently and then uh, have your code being executed uh, in MicroPython. I found that really cool. So the question is, uh, what do you actually use for development? So do you use an, a kind of IDE for development, or is there anything special for, for MicroPython in that regard? Um, yes, thanks for the question. Um, well, no, not really, not really the, an IDE is used. You are talking about the Unix MicroPython port, probably. This was the first part of the question, was it? Um, well, uh, anything. Like, wh what do you use for, for development, right? So, for development actual software for these devices. Um, Is it just an, an editor and then you copy the code over and then you run it there? Or, like, how do you try stuff out and how do you debug and develop? E so, there, yeah, there's no official uh, software development platform for it, like an, no IDE, which is officially supported, but you can get plugins at, for some. Oh, it's at least in the state, yeah. This is, okay, thanks. For the question, comment. Hi, thank you. Uh, I wonder, uh, what will happen if you do the intensity really high? Is it possible to break the, the controller? Uh, the pi bot, like the MCU, yeah, actually? Yeah, yeah. You mean, by breaking, you mean like bricking, that you can't control it, uh, like program it anymore? I don't even know what I mean, but like really no, it's do something. It's not a good question. Recordable. It's a really good question. You can if you enter certain registers. So you can, but we tried to, like, we were selling a lot of them. So I think I have one or two which were actually broken. So like broken in the kind you probably mean that they oh no I programmed it and now it doesn't respond anymore. You can always do factory reset or you can reflash the firmware. For example, um, when, you, when, there's, when there are firmware upgrades, you can flash it on your board. You, you need to, to be able to do that. So if you really like 
program. This happens. You saw about what I did in the in the tests here. You can just reset it, and there are different ways. So if you're interested in in all of this. You can go to our homepage. There's a documentation, which is probably better um, than what I showed you here. There's also a MicroPython, like a Unicorn emulator, where you can run, you can choose a demo, for example. Probably I ha should have done this earlier. Um, like, let's go with the LED script here. And you run the script, and you see that it works. It, how it should even work on your real device. So, yes, I thought, well, that's great, so now we don't sell any pyrons anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you would like, there you can, can't broke anything that costs any, for example, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I've got another question. Um, is there any kind of uh, network connection or a, another kind of radio chip that you can connect to your MicroPython? Um, there are. Like, for example, the ESP is a Wi-Fi chip and has also, the ESP32 also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with it. Um, and you mean, is there a Pi bond with a, with a Wi-Fi connectivity? Could um, I connect it to the, to the network yes, somewhere? That, yes, somehow. you can connect it. Oh, obviously, that's why you have all your, your in and outputs over there. Okay. And there are some, like, if you go to the forum, you can find, a, but it's not, like, on the board you have now, but you can buy one and plug it, obviously. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering how, how, how the, the speed difference is uh, between the, the MicroPython board and, uh, for example, an Arduino board. Who's Arduino? No. Um, uh, yes, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't. Uh, know the actual numbers of the Arduino boards. So, if you s like that, we have an F STM F4 on the actual Pi board now. So this is 128 megahertz. So this is the light one. This is a little bit um, which I gave you, but the official is 128 megahertz. So um, I guess the Arduinos, but I I, uh, I have no Wi-Fi here. Uh, I'm just wondering if, 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 if uh, you, you can uh, do compatible projects with the Pi board, where, which you so, so that, that, that you can that, that you don't have to use an an Arduino. Or yes, that you definitely. Can That's do definitely a, yeah. Anything that, that you can do on the Arduino, you can do on a Pi board. I would say so. Yes, yes. But I have to say, I'm not so thing. super familiar with all the Arduino um, platforms. Okay. So, are you familiar with Arduino platforms? <laughs> kind of, but... Uh, yeah. So, what do you think of the Pi board in compar comparison? Well, I, I haven't used the Pi board. Oh, you have? Do you, so don't, you didn't get one? Yeah, I, 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 I got it now, but I, I don't know how, how, how this, the speed is when, when you have to, to run yeah, something. Yeah, of, obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you for the talk. Um, can you quickly explain what the difference is between a microbit controller and the Pi board. Is there any substantial difference or what would, would you recommend to use and why? Um, do you, uh, thank you. Do you mean the BBC microbit in yes. comparison? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, um, the BBC microbit has less RAM, which is probably the most disadvantage because you don't have the, the, um, the much space for your programs on the board in the internal flash. This is, would be like a negative sign, but you al always have to see what do you want to use it for. Um, I think the microbit is quite good for children because they have these um, crocodile clips that they can clip on and add, so it's maybe easier. So, yeah. It has, it has a radio system on it so you can uh, transmit to other microbits, for example. I think that's not on Pi board, is it true? Uh, not on the one you got now. Ah, okay. I didn't get one. <laughs> oh, you did get one. Do we have can some you, left? <laughs> can you can you send me an email on my yes. contact at microphone? Thank you. Okay. I played a bit around and saved some stuff into main PY um, and then rebooted device and then it was gone. Do I need to sync or do something special to conserve it? Um, you, uh, you entered the main pie uh, on the internal flash? Yeah, and I saved it from the editor. Yeah. 
and I reboot it or, or unplug the power and then it was gone. Yes, that's sorry that I didn't mention before. You need to unplug it like you unplug a uh, USB drive, an external, because otherwise it can be corrupted. <laughs> so j j pl please, you can we can look into it later if you if you like. Yeah. Yeah. Any further questions or comments? Well then, let's thank Christina again for the illuminating talk. Thank you.